Greetings, one and all. Since the great expansion of the National Hockey League in 1967, hockey has been present and growing steadily in the state of Missouri. Even though they have yet to clinch their first Stanley Cup victory in franchise history, the St. Louis Blues have seen plenty of ups and downs during their 51-year tenure in the league. However, what if I told you that there was a team in St. Louis well before the 1967 expansion? Well, in this video, we shall learn all about this mysterious team. This is the story of the St. Louis Eagles, Missouri's one-season wonder. The tale of the St. Louis Eagles actually begins in Ottawa, Ontario, during the year 1934. The original Ottawa Senators franchise, which was founded in 1883 as an amateur club and was one of the charter members and most successful teams in the NHL's early years, was enduring continued financial strain as a result of playing in the NHL's smallest market. Ottawa at the time was home to a population of just 110,000 people, one-fifth of their Ontarian neighbours Toronto, and the Senators were struggling to get fans through the gate, especially when they played against the rising number of American teams that were being created through the 1920s. These struggles continued to mount despite the Ottawa Senators winning four Stanley Cup championships in the NHL's first decade of existence. Just goes to show you can have all the success you want, but if you can't get fans through the gates, then it's all going to go downhill. After continued losses both on the ice and in the bank balance, the Senators decided to suspend operations for the 1931-32 NHL season in order to try and raise some money. During this time, the team raised over $50,000 through bank loans and calling in favours to try and get the team back on its feet. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be enough to save the Senators' franchise long term. The team returned to the league to play two more years, came dead last both of those years, and lost approximately $60,000 in the process. It was then that the team was moved elsewhere to try and pay off their debts and protect the team's shareholders. On May 14th, 1934, the league approved a transfer of the team's contracts and franchise operations to St. Louis, Missouri, under the Hockey Association of St. Louis, Inc. St. Louis was the seventh largest city in America at the time, with over 800,000 inhabitants, so it was expected that the franchise could bring in bigger crowds and pay off the Senators' debt in no time. After naming Eddie Girard the team's new coach, the nickname of the St. Louis franchise was changed to the Eagles, inspired by the logo of the Anheuser-Busch Brewing Company that was founded in St. Louis. However, before the Eagles even took to the ice, there was already some problems beginning to arise. When the Eagles moved to St. Louis, Missouri kind of forgot to mention that there was already a professional hockey team in the city, the St. Louis Flyers of the American Hockey Association. The Flyers owners claimed that they had an agreement with the NHL, which prevented the league from settling west of the Mississippi River. After all, the city of St. Louis had been trying to get an NHL franchise since the year 1932, but were denied as travel to the Midwest was considered too expensive during the Great Depression. The Flyers were so serious about this agreement that they were threatening to sue the NHL for $200,000 as soon as the Eagles played their first game. However, the American Hockey Association president visited the Flyers, asked them nicely not to sue the NHL, so the Flyers didn't pursue legal action. I guess asking nicely can get you what you want sometimes. But after a pretty crazy introduction to the city of St. Louis, the Eagles were ready to take to the ice and bring NHL hockey to Missouri for the first time. The 1934-35 NHL season saw the Eagles take the now-defunct Senators' place as the fifth team in the Canadian division, despite the obvious geographical distance. The team's roster primarily consisted of ex-Senators players, as the team looked to bring home Stanley Cup glory to the St. Louis Arena. An arena that once the Eagles started playing in, gained the distinction of being the only NHL stadium with racially segregated seating. Not exactly something to be proud of nowadays, but there you go. Anyway, the Eagles started the season with a loss to the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks, recorded their first win the next game against the New York Rangers, but then went on an eight-game losing streak. After going 2-11-0 in their first 13 games of the season, head coach Eddie Gerrard resigned and was replaced by George Buck Boucher, the coach that Gerrard had replaced after the team left Ottawa. The new coach brought some improvements to the team's record as the Eagles went 3-3-3 in their next nine games, but the early losing streak had already started to turn fans away from the games. 
After pulling in an attendance of 12,622 for their opening game, by January 1935, the team cut their ticket prices to the lowest in the league, in an attempt to raise interest in a fan base, becoming quickly disinterested with a losing hockey franchise. By February 1935, the team was forced to sell their leading goalscorer, Sid Howe, as well as Ralph Bowman, to the Detroit Red Wings for Teddy Graham and $50,000, considered a large sum of money at the time, as well as sending Frank Finnegan to the Toronto Maple Leafs. These trades did nothing to help the Eagles' season on the ice, as the team finished with an 11-31-6 record, which was good enough for last place in the Canadian division. However... Worse news was coming off the ice. By the end of their inaugural NHL season, the St. Louis Eagles had lost $70,000. This was primarily due to the cost of train travel, which was the conventional way for teams to travel at that time. As the Eagles played in the Canadian division and not the American division, they would often have to travel to Montreal or Toronto, which wouldn't be cheap. After raising $58,000 by selling some of the team's best players and trying to move the franchise to Cleveland or even back to Ottawa, the NHL put the Eagles on sale. After no credible offers surfaced, the NHL bought out the franchise and the players' contracts for $40,000 and opted to play as an eight-team league moving forwards. As a result, the Ottawa Senators' St. Louis Eagles franchise never took to the ice ever again and still remain as one of the two NHL teams that have folded after winning the Stanley Cup. Thus ended the St. Louis Eagles. After just a single season in the NHL, the franchise from St. Louis ceased operations and faded into the hockey history books as a team mired in controversy and struggles both on and off the ice. But even though they only played one season in the NHL, one thing's for sure. The St. Louis Eagles sparked an interest in NHL hockey within the state of Missouri, which would get its second chance to shine in 1967. And after 51 years, hockey in St. Louis is still going strong. Whether big or small, I think the Eagles had some part to play in the success of the Blues, as they helped pave the way for the NHL west of the Mississippi River. And there you go. That was the story of the St. Louis Eagles. What do you think about the Eagles franchise? Were they good? Bad? Or do you think they deserved a second season to try and straighten things out? Also, is there another defunct or historical hockey franchise you would like me to make a video on? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!